Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. It's a great day, my friend. Welcome to the broadcast. Thanks so much for joining us. It's a great day because it's Tuesday. It's Tract and Truth Tuesday. That's the title we give to each and every one of our broadcasts here at Bible Tract Echoes on our Tuesday edition. You see, we are firm believers that people who know Christ as Savior, they are called to give out the gospel, and we believe those who know Christ want to tell the gospel, but they just sometimes don't know how to get started, and so we publish gospel tracts to help people give the gospel out, and we want to use our Tuesday broadcast in a particular way to strengthen one another in doing the gospel work. And that's our intent even today, although this is a, well, it's a really unusual kind of track and truth Tuesday. If you can right now, get your Bible and join me in Psalm 56. I want to read the opening four verses here in just a moment. Psalm 56. I've got a gospel tract I want to tell you about, but let me lead into the broadcast this way. You quickly find out why this is an unusual day. My key word for today is anorexia. Anorexia. You probably you know of a person or a family friend who has struggled with anorexia. It's an eating disorder, and typically around the age of puberty or so, girls in particular can have a real unhealthy view of their body and their weight, and they begin to starve themselves. It's a serious health issue, but at the core of it, there is an even more serious spiritual issue. So why has the subject of anorexia caught my attention on track and truth Tuesday? Well, it's because for this reason, one of our children's tracks was used by the Lord to dramatically help an anorexic young lady, a lady in her 20s. If that sounds a little, well, a little too good to be true, then stay tuned. I'll tell you the story today here on Track and Truth Tuesday. Well, I have a gospel tract in my hand. As a matter of fact, it is the very gospel tract that was used by God in that 20-something gal. It's a children's tract entitled, Are You Afraid? Now, I mentioned this tract even just two weeks ago, but since God is using it, I'm going to tell you about it again. Are You Afraid? This track was designed. It has, by the way, the coloring scheme on it that a lot of people use it at Halloween time, but it's not really a Halloween track, although it talks about being afraid. This gospel track confronts the whole idea of fear at a child's level. It talks about Isaiah 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. We explain that verse in kiddo language in this track. And God uses it to see young people impacted and even evidently some 20-year-olds by this gospel track. Friend, I want to put into your hand a free sample packet containing one each of all of our English tracks. There are over 40 tracks in the sample packet. This one, Are You Afraid?, is just one of them. Please let me do that. At the end of the program, my announcer will give you three different ways by which you can give to me your name and your mailing address. If you'll do that, we'll send that free sample packet typically in the next business day's mail. If you can't wait to the end of the program, then just go to our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember that word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S, BibleTracksInc.org. I mentioned about Pakistan here a moment ago. 
we are on the very threshold of trying to print 1.3 million gospel tracts again inside of Pakistan. We're having a major impact there as we put tools into the hands of believers in the country of Pakistan. We actually hire Muslim printers to help us print the gospel tracts because they're the only ones with a big enough press. But friend, the tracks go out, they're handed out, and thousands of people are coming to Christ. And I'm not exaggerating, thousands. But the cost of printing 1.3 million is $22,000. We're in the throes of trying to collect that money. If you could help us, that would be a huge blessing to us. Would you consider a gift to help us print tracks inside the Muslim world? Well, I've got my Bible open, as I said to the book of the Psalms, Psalm 56, verses 1 to 4 says this, Be merciful unto me, O God, for man would swallow me up. He, fighting daily, oppresses me. Mine enemies would daily swallow me up, for they be many that fight against me, O thou most high. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. In God will I praise his word. In God have I put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do unto me. I also think of the verse over there in the first chapter of 2 Timothy, which says that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Well, recently, as I said, a lady in her 20s read the gospel tract I mentioned a moment ago, Are You Afraid? Now, this tract was written for elementary age kiddos. It was a major tool, though, that was used by the Holy Spirit to help free this 20-something gal from her fear. You see, the gal was battling anorexia. It was a four-year battle in her life. And from a medical perspective, she had been getting help, and she was improving. But the root cause of her eating disorder was a spiritual issue and not a physical or medical issue. Her medical condition of anorexia resulted because she chose wrong things to put and to keep her mind fixed upon and her wrong things by which to view herself. She had two basic key problems. Number one was an unbiblical view of her body, and number two, an untruthful belief system. You see, she had set up what many call idols in her heart. You know what you do with an idol? You worship it. All of us have this place in us, not just our physical heart, but I'm talking about the place where we have our value system, our soul, where we think and we make decisions, that heart. We all have an idol there. Now, that can be a good idol, like we can put Jesus on the throne of our heart, or we can have bad idols. Well, this gal had an idol in her heart. She worshiped at the altar of human acceptance. She feared the opinion of people and had no idea, no grasp at all on God's opinion of who she was, particularly of her physical body, as well as of her soul. She was trapped in a performance-based kind of relationship with people and with God. You see, she had to be pleasing to other people, and for that to happen, she had to have the right kind of physical body weight. But she also felt the same way about God. God would love her if she would jump through a certain set of spiritual hoops. Well, This broadcast today is certainly not intended to deal with the whole issues of anorexia and fears. These are issues that need to be confronted, but confronted by a godly, thoroughly biblical, Bible-oriented pastor or counselor. These are issues that I say are spiritual issues. They need biblical answers. They need help from the Word of God. So what did this 20-something young lady read in our children's track that helped her out? Well, there are four things here. And as they're struggling with the fear in her life, their fear was causing her to run away. Oh, she was not running away physically from people, but she was running away from life. We can run away when we get afraid. As a child, I was afraid of the neighbor's dog, and every time he came around, I would run away. But people can run away from their fears. 
literally or seemingly just running away inside their head. Sometimes problems in our life seem to be so insurmountable that there is no way out, so we run away in some manner or form. Or we can run away using things like anorexia and some other self-destructive practices. So what four things did this young lady learn about that the gospel tract that is written for kids help produce in her life? Here are the four things. Number one, we need to know who you and I are as born-again people. She began to really get a hold of who she was as a born-again person. Would you sometimes just go and reread again the entire chapter of Romans 8? That is one of the best chapters in all of the Word of God to help us really become solidified in who we are as a born-again person. Two basic things come out there. Number one, I am a child of the King. I am a child of God. Number two, I am a conqueror because of Christ. I'm a conqueror through Christ. He is my conqueror. I do not conquer and I do not win because of my performance, but because of the performance and the victory Jesus won at Calvary and the empty tomb. Oh, friend, I love what it says in Ephesians chapter 1. We are accepted by God in the Beloved, the capital B, in the Beloved One, Jesus the Christ. Friend, are you shaky about who you are as a born-again person? If you do not know whether you're born again, you ought to be shaky. But if a day came in your life when you honestly from your soul said, God in heaven, I'm a sinner. I'm on my way to hell. I don't want to go there. Somebody told me that you love me. Somebody told me you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for me. Somebody said that he paid my sin price and I want my sins paid for. I want Jesus as my savior. If you pray that kind of a prayer to almighty God resting in Jesus, then you're born again. But go to Romans 8 and become really, well, ratchet down your soul in the truth of Romans 8. Second thing this lady learned, she learned, first of all, to know who she was as a born-again person. Number two, who her helper is. Who is this lady's helper? Well, obviously, Jesus Christ, the risen Lord, is her helper. But secondly, there's this indwelling Holy Spirit, the third person of the triune God indwelling her. Her body is a temple, and she's been bought with a price. Therefore, she can glorify God. And this gal began to memorize verses about God's power and the way God helps his people. The third thing she began to really get a hold of was this. Her knowledge of the Word of God, knowing God's Word is true. What she reads in the Word of God about who she is, what she reads in the Word of God about her standing in Jesus Christ, it is true. you got to believe the truth and not Satan's lies. And then number four, she developed an accountability partner. You and I in our spiritual walk, especially if we're struggling with some key issues, we need to be accountable to a godly authority. What do you do with that person? Well, these three things. Number one, you tell your accountability partner where in the Bible you are reading this morning. Number two, you tell your accountability partner the verses you are hiding in your memory bank, you're memorizing. And then number three, you tell your accountability partner how you're turning those verses you're memorizing into prayers to really bring stability to your heart, soul, and walk with Christ. Oh, friend, we need not be afraid. We have God as our power. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracts, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888, and our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.